Hey guys, what's going on? You know, just leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. So a few days ago, I posted a video about the A10 5800K, and then after that I posted a video about the stock fan versus the Hypo 212. And so today I thought I would tell you about overclocking the AMD A10. Now this is probably going to be the last video I post about the A10, but I would still encourage you to stick around for more videos in the future because I do a lot of other stuff. I don't just do computer things. I like to do other things like drawing. I play games every now and again. I like to talk. There's this guy here. I love that guy so much. I love you! Now the important thing about the A... about blah. Can't speak today. The important thing about the AMD A10 5800K or any APU is that it's going to use a lot more voltage than you would normally use for a standard CPU. The reason for this is because of that integrated graphics unit. It's got the CPU and it's got the GPU. It's the APU. Stock out of the box. Standard settings on whatever motherboard you use. Or at least on my motherboard. I'll have the specs for my motherboard down in the description if you want to check that out. Again, this is following my motherboard and my CPU and my settings. So I don't guarantee that putting in these numbers as I have them listed will make your APU work in an overclock. I've had problems with overclocking at certain settings. I've had problems with the GPU and not being able to overclock that, so today I'm going to focus on the CPU part of it. My motherboard is an MSI FM2 A85 XAG65. Again, I'm going to have these down in the description. And then, of course, the AMD A105800K. I'm using 1866 memory G-Skill rip jaws, and those are really the important things about it. Stock out of the box, the A10 runs at 3.8, the turbo core is set to 4.2 and it's on auto, which means under high stress it'll kick up to 4.2 gigahertz, even if you have it set at uh, 3.8 gigahertz with the 38 multiplier. At this setting the voltage runs between 1.28 and 1.34. Now disabling the turbo core it runs about what did it run? About 1.3, 1.34, I believe, on mine. And overclocking to 4 gigahertz brought me to 1.48 volts. At the clock I have it right now, 4.4 gigahertz, I have the setting at 1.51825. If you were doing this on a standard CPU, that would be very high, and it would probably run hot. And yes, the CPU does run hot. And that's because of all that extra voltage, but you need that voltage to keep it stable. Again, it's got the CPU and the GPU. The RAM, there's no problem with that at all. RAM, stick it in there, say the speed, 1866, say the voltage, 1.5. And then it sticks there and it's beautiful. CPU, get to know what your motherboard can do. Get to know what is stable for your CPU. I recommend... You can check anybody on YouTube that stresses CPUs and overclocks them. Uh, a great program is SpeedFan to monitor temperatures and fan speeds, as well as voltage. Uh, CPU-Z, or if you're British, CPU-Z, uh, to monitor voltages. I don't think you can monitor temperatures on it, but it gives you a lot of information about your system. And then to stress the system, there's a program called Prime95 and you can stress the CPU, you can stress the RAM, you can stress them both, or however you want to do. What I would recommend doing is finding a voltage and a speed that you feel comfortable with. Say you want to try 4.1 gigahertz. Set the voltage to what you think it can run at, and then see if it'll boot. If it'll boot, go to Prime95 and open Speed Fan. Keep an eye on your temperatures, and then keep an eye on... Well, also open CPU-Z. Keep an eye on the voltages as well. If you have VDROOP on, it will fluctuate between a certain point, either go up or go down. Don't worry about this because I find that it's a nice little buffer when you're not stressing the system and it pushes it a bit more when it needs that extra juice. Keep an eye on the temperatures, keep an eye on whether or not the voltages seem stable. I will say if it goes more than 0.05 above your temperature, above your voltage, sorry. So if I have mine set at 1.51, if it jumps to 1.56, I know that it's 
not the most stable thing ever. I'll go back into the BIOS and fix it up. If it crashes doing the stress test, doing Prime 95, doing it thing, bleh, doing it thing, doing its thing, then go back into the BIOS, increase the voltages a little bit, like one increment at a time. So if you have 4.0 gigahertz and you have it set at 1.45, for example, I don't know what all the voltage settings are, uh, and it crashes, then you could go and set it to 1.565 or whatever the next step up is and then see if it's stable. I don't recommend overclocking with a stock fan. I recommend overclocking with a better aftermarket fan like the like the Cooler Master Hyper 212. This is the plus. I don't think there's much difference. Or if you want to try water cooling it, then go for the Corsair H100 or the H80 or whatever you fancy. I don't recommend putting in really expensive things for an AMD APU mainly because you want to keep the prices balanced and it wouldn't make much sense to put $300 worth of water cooling on a $150 CPU that you'll more than likely upgrade from later on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did go down below and leave a like because I like likes but I don't like like likes and also if you like Bomberman because again I love him. Hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah. See ya.